Hello, God-loving viewers. Today, we will begin a three-part program featuring an interview with Ms. Marge DeVivo from the United States, a trusted disciple of the great spiritual saint of the Himalayas, Hoidakon Babaji. Hoidakon Babaji is an immortal Mahavata, meaning a great divine being who can manifest a human form at will. He is believed to be the same mysterious Mahavata who is described in Paramahansa Yogananda's fascinating book, Autobiography of a Yogi. Mahavatar, it, the meaning of that is that he didn't come through a woman's body. Uh -huh. He just creates a body. Babaji has many different forms and many incarnations that he's taken but he doesn't do normal incarnations by being born at, and uh, coming through a woman as a little baby and all that. He can form a body anytime he wants to. Now, the first place that I heard about Mahavatar Babaji was when I read Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and that was in about 1973 or 1974. It talked about Mavatar Babaji as a being who came to help the earth, that he and Jesus worked in, in connection with each other. The other thing that was said was that anytime you mention Babaji's name in reverence, you receive an instantaneous blessing. And so when I read all of that, I sat very quietly, said his name, and I did feel a blessing. And so then my other prayer that I put out to the universe right then and there was, if you're in a body now, I want to see you. And I said it with all my heart and soul. And just felt like I really had a deep connection with Baba Chief. In 1978, Mr. Vivo came in contact with Baba Ji through one of his students who taught workshops in the United States. Finally, in 1982, she and her partner decided to travel to India to meet him. Who was this wondrous being called Babaji, whom Mr. Vivo was going to visit in India? Let's take a look at his story. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, a legendary yogi who was called Hodakon Babaji appeared frequently in northern India in the Himalayan region. He was said to possess all of the yogic cities or supernatural powers and the people who met him would experience a deep bliss in his presence. The last time he was seen was in 1922 when he disappeared before a group of his students in a ball of light. Many people believed that Hoidakond Babaji was the immortal Babaji. One of these was the well-known saint Mohendra Baba who had met Babaji in his youth and diligently prophesied that Babaji would appear again in public soon. In 1970, a man from Hoidakon by the name of Chandramani had a dream in which his long deceased father, who had been a devotee of Hoidakon Baba, appeared to him and told him that Babaji had reappeared and that he should go and look for him in a certain cave. Chandramani went to the cave and found a venerable old man with a long white beard sitting there. The old man told him to go back home and come back in three days. Chandramani went home but returned immediately. When he came back to his amazement, instead of the old man, he found a young yogi of angelic beauty who seemed to be only 20 to 22 years old. The young saint acknowledged that he was Hoidakant Baba. This new Babaji, who seemed to be 20 to 22 years old, later stated in the local court that his age was 130 years. The court acknowledged that he was the same Hoidakant Babaji who had appeared half a century earlier in the same region. Ms. Marge de Vivo kindly shared about her first meeting with Babaji at his Hoidakon ashram in the Himalayas. When we got up there, Babaji was down in the, water, in the riverbed taking his bath. 
he'd go down and they'd pour buckets of water over him and whoever was asked to come for the bath was kind of a privilege and he watched us this took like 15 minutes to walk from where we were over to where he was we were walking across the riverbed trying to just stay calm as everything started to tremble as I got closer to him and so I finally got over to him and in the procedure is always that you touch his feet the tradition in India so bent down to touch his feet and then stood up and he's standing this close and he said what your names and I, I couldn't I opened my mouth and I knew what my name was but I couldn't say anything nothing would come out my partner says oh our names what are our names <laughs> I don't remember what our names are <laughs> so finally <laughs> he says we're Jim and Marge and then I could open my mouth and I said and we came from our teacher Imam Imam was the one who taught us for that whole year and I knew that he was very close to Imam and Babaji just turned and he looked down the riverbed and he screamed Imam! Imam! with all his force and then when he turned back to us there was none of that he just looked at us and he told us to go sit under a tree where it was shady because it was very hot and so we finally sat in the shade and he came up to talk to us we were sitting there and kind of trembling in awe and unable to really function at all he walked in front of us he just kept pacing back and forth back and forth he was building up this energy back and forth and then he grabbed a chapati because it was lunchtime and there was a plate of chapati there he took a bite out of it and then he breathed on the rest of it and he went over to Jim and he said open and he shoved the chapati in Jim's mouth and Jim ate it and then he did the same thing with me with a smaller one and the minute that food got into our mouth with his energy on it everything calmed down it was just total peace harmony here we are in India isn't this great here's Babaji and it felt like that was all there was and that all there had ever been was Babaji and that this was normal life the only thing about that was that as we went on with our day we realized we couldn't even remember anything from our other life and we knew that I had three sisters Jim had five sisters and neither of us could remember even one sister's name it was like this was the only life and it wore off by the time we were coming back but it stayed this way the whole time we were there really so I, that was a blessing because we could go on with daily life there as if this is normal and this is fine because it was such a complete different lifestyle and if we had stayed in that state of awe that we started out in I don't think we could have stayed there at all it was just too intense his eyes are dark and sparkling laughing full of bliss endless in their depth seeming to contain or reflect the cosmos his face is full like the sun his beauty is beyond this world his body is broad sometimes quite large in stature at times he seems to carry the earth in his belly one devotee had an experience of entering Babaji's body and in fact viewing seemingly the whole universe contained therein despite this load grace characterizes all of his movements he walks sometimes carrying a staff and his feet like the lotus flower do not seem to rest on the ground at times he leaves no footprints some people who have carried him report that he seems to weigh almost nothing what one observes in Babaji's physical appearance depends upon what Babaji chooses to disclose Sheila, an Indian devotee, first met Babaji in 1972. When she first saw Babaji, she spoke to him internally. She asked that if he were what he was reported as being, 
he should disclose himself to her. For the next half hour, as she continually pinched herself to make sure she wasn't dreaming, she stared at his face, which changed like a kaleidoscope from one form of God to another, running the gamut of Hindu and other deities. I have seen him also with my physical eyes as the great Lord Shiva. One time I even saw his face as Hanuman, the beloved monkey-faced God, who is said to be a Shiva manifestation. This fairest flower of creation, ocean of mercy without any motive, why has he come to the world? To the worldly minded it is impossible to perceive Babaji's nature, but God has few to whom he whispers in the ear. It is for these that he has come into the world. This is what he said, I am everywhere, in your every breath, I am come to help you realize unity beyond division. I will show you a freedom you have not imagined. You must seek that unity where there is an awareness that we are all one and the same. You should seek harmony in all that you do. I am harmony. He gave us the mantra Om Namah Shivai as the way to purify and be in alignment with ourselves and so so while in his presence you could feel it was like a vibrational Om Namah Shivai all over the land all around but the major things too were, were just how you knew that he knew everything about you and still loved you there was so much unconditional love coming out of him even though he knew all my past all my future that was mind-boggling I mean truly mind-boggling and to actually feel unconditional love from any being is something I don't think you get over and I think I think that's what had a lot of the people really staying there and wanting to be there so much is because you felt that total complete acceptance and unconditional love Today, many years after Mr. Vivo studied with Babaji in India, and long since he had left that form, she is still communicating and working with her beloved teacher. The mission is to spread the eternal teachings of truth, simplicity and love, service to humanity and remembering God. Upon Babaji's instruction for this mission, Ms. Marge de Viva created a website for all to freely access his universal teachings and an online spiritual minded community at www.babaji.net. Thank you for your kind company today. Please join us next Sunday, October 24th, for the continuation of our three-part program, when we will hear various accounts about the miraculous immortal saint, Mahavata Bhavaji. Now please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for our noble lineage right after noteworthy news. Blessed be the divine within you. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AJAR 2012-2013.